This is not a review of the Sony a7 IV, but instead a more of a slow forming opinion. So whenever I discover something new about the camera, then I'll make a video and share it with you guys. So I shot my first car with the Sony a7 IV. It's not a Porsche, like you would expect. It's not perfect by any means, it's daily driven. But this one is particularly special because it's my car. I was out in the neighborhood for a walk with my dog, and then I see this in my neighbor's driveway with a for sale sign. We got to chatting, one thing led to another, and ended up in my driveway. I think whatever was going on when you're like, you know, 12, 13 years old, 10, whatever, around that area, like 10 to 13, is the stuff that you look back on with that sense of nostalgia and fondness. Because I think it's an interesting age. 12 years old is, you know, like, you're old enough to sort of get things and understand things, but you're still young enough to be in awe of them. You're not super jaded by then. Whatever was going on when you were that age, you look back on when you're older with fondness, and that's kind of what this car is for me. I wasn't planning on buying a car. It's completely spontaneous. My wife is thrilled about it. But anyway, and so I've been taking the Sony a7 IV paired with the 24 to 70 out with me whenever I take this car out, because you know, in case I see something cool, I want to capture it with the camera. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you're a subscriber, you're probably wondering, why aren't you taking the Fuji out, the X100V? Well, you would be ranting and raving last video. The Fuji doesn't quite work for this car, and there's a good reason for that. See, it's a very squarish kind of shape to this car. It's a very 90s, 80s kind of look to it. And at 23 mil focal length, this doesn't do the proportions of the car justice. You need a longer focal length to capture it properly. And so I've been throwing the Sony in my bag and taking it with me anytime I take this car out. I really didn't know where to shoot, but I like the yellow and the brown. It just kind of worked. We've got an off-camera strobe, trigger on the camera, and then I'm using the app to trigger everything. On the still side, there's really not much to report. It's pretty, I mean, expected that the raw files hold up well. You can push and pull them in Lightroom and in Photoshop. The whole time I've been shooting Canon for stills and switching over to Sony, the fact that there isn't some crazy difference in experience to report is a good thing. You know, my last video was this ode to the Fuji X100V and lots of emotions. It's not about what the camera does, but it's what it inspires you. You know, the Sony in comparison is like a computer and that's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, it's just like this sterile tool that you use, like a spatula or a, you know, a wrench. You're not necessarily compelled to use it or inspired by it, but it does a great job at what it does. Because I wasn't compelled to use it unless I needed to use it. I wasn't really using it much. So when we went to Portugal, I decided to pack two cameras. Of course, the Fuji, and I packed the Sony a7 IV. And so all the video footage you saw in the last video, which was shot in Portugal, was all shot on the Sony a7 IV. None of it was shot on the Fuji. Because I wanted to get a sense of, okay, I've shot with the FX3. How different is the Sony a7 IV footage going to be to me? And honestly, it holds up. It can cut directly alongside FX3 footage. The 4K is probably a little bit sharper because it's down sample 6K. But the biggest difference is just the freaking rolling shutter is terrible. It really is terrible, especially coming from the FX3 where it really doesn't have much rolling shutter. The rolling shutter of the Sony a7 IV, the second you move the camera a little too quickly, you just, it's jello. As an overall value proposition for a hybrid camera, it's pretty incredible what the Sony a7 IV offers. I mean, you've got Great codecs, and you got S Log 3, you got 10 bit color, you got great autofocus and IBIS, and it's a great stills camera at the price that you're getting it at. There really is nothing to complain about with this camera other than the rolling shutter. So that's it for this one, but I have shot more with it since we've been making this video. So the next one, especially if you like cars, I'm taking more stills with it, just subscribe, you'll see. Okay, see you next time.